Um, go ahead, Chris. What's your what's your big trade of the week? Not sure if I'd be wanting to do this if I were Houston. But, <laughs> but and I'm not uh, the full disclosure. I'm not a Boston Celtic fan. In fact, I'm not a Boston Celtic fan at all. Oh, who are we trading on the Celtics? How about shipping off some expiring contracts? The Celtics, one of the things we talked about, your, your kind of highlighted game from last night, Celtics-Mavericks. The Celtics need an extra scoring punch. The Celtics get Luis Scola, one of the better big men in the league, from the Houston Rockets. And then I think that you can fill that in with a couple of assorted role players. Rockets were looking to get rid of some expiring contracts. Maybe you, you know, depending on, on how willing they want to maybe unload a contract like Samuel Dallenbear or you know, going down the line, you look at even someone like Hashim Thabit just to get that contract off their hands. But the crux of the deal would be the Celtics landing a player like Luis Scola and then giving up Jermaine O'Neal's expiring contract giving up Brandon Bass, who they just acquired, and is a nice fit, and then maybe giving up one of their younger players, such as Juwan Johnson, young guy out of Purdue, had a very nice college career there. It's not the perfect trade. It's probably one I wouldn't be wanting to do if I were Houston in terms of the talent. However, we go back to that Houston team. Look at their roster. You know, Luis Scola, 31 years old, power forward, goes about 6'9". You just drafted Chandler Parsons out of Florida, 6'9", small forward, power forward guy, who is maybe not as bulky, clearly not as bulky as Scola, but is a very good rebounder. Uh -huh. You have Chase Budinger at that small forward position. You have Jordan Hill out of Arizona. You have Courtney Lee more at the shooting guard role. You just drafted another 6'9", power forward out of Kansas and Marcus Morris. Scola was someone who was talked about in possibly changing teams when the big deal was going to be done possibly with Chris Paul. And as we all know, none of that worked out. Scola's name was at least brought up that I think a lot of teams are going to be looking for him. And if I were the Celtics, he'd be a number one on my list and, and see if you can pry him away, see what kind of talent you have to give up and, and, and how willing the Rockets would be desiring to take on expired contracts um i'm trying to get steve nash out of phoenix myself because i feel like there's a lot of teams that could use him um what i'm talking about here is is los angeles because nobody needs a point guard as far as top 10 nba teams like the lakers right i mean the the heat well the heat have basically got a point forward right they've got lebron chicago's got d rose oklahoma city has westbrook uh, Denver even has Ty Lawson. I'm just going through my top ten. The Clippers have Chris Paul. You know, there's point guards here. Um, you can even or Orlando's my number seven team, and I I kind of like Jameer Nelson. You know, and when we, we we talked about Drew Holiday on the Sixers before, I'm just Portland. We talked about Felton. Th these are my top ten NBA teams, right? And they all have point guards. Well, the Lakers don't have a point guard. They just don't. Derek Fisher is not gonna do it anymore he's not serviceable enough because he's a great defender and he's a good three-point shooter but he can't defend these guys anymore he can't defend any of the guys that i just listed rose lebron james o oklahoma city you know russell westbrook Ty he can't defend these guys so what i'm saying is actually you keep you keep Derek fisher on the team right but what i'm thinking right now is that we'll ship over Nash, who's got who's making eleven million dollars this year. It's his last year for a one, maybe one year. Maybe he'll re up for a year after that. You know, I'm not really sure um, because Kobe's getting older, so it's okay for them to get a guy like Nash because it's about getting rings now. Because Kobe's not getting any younger. He's not going to be able to ring, win a ring in four years from now. But as we've seen this year, he can he can really win a ring now if he has a point guard. Um, so, Metal World Peace, Steve Blake, head over to Phoenix. Phoenix ships over Steve Nash. Sorry, Metal World Peace. You amnesty World Peace so that you can get yourself under the cap space. He'll clear waivers. Somebody will pick him up because he's he's a good defender and he's a serviceable 11-point-a-game scorer. And then you kind of have a guy in Steve Blake who's a pretty good point guard. He's not good enough to run the Lakers. 
but he's a good point guard, and he'll be there for, you know, three or four years, and you can sort of figure out where you want to go. If nothing else, he'll be one of the best backups you have if you pick up somebody from the draft or something like that. But I really think that Steve Nash is better served in a better team than Phoenix. And uh, it would be it would be good for the Lakers. If if not, I think I would like to see the Lakers make a move no matter what for a point guard. Get a point guard, and that's all there is to it. Maybe a small forward, but you need a point guard more, and we've seen that. Uh, all right, that would be I think yeah. that would be incredibly intriguing. I I, I would just say that to see Nash in Tinseltown <laughs> running the show, run you know the, the two you know all of a sudden obviously you know he'd only be there for a year maybe two, but um. You know, all of a sudden it would be the new Showtime. 